Okay, I am back. This is part two. I don't think I'll be able to cut this, so I apologize if you're coming in just to catch up. It's going to take me a minute to get everyone moved over from the live stream. So if you're following the lesson, just, you know, fast forward a few, a few seconds. I've got to get this link to everybody. Um, hmm. Okay, Clark Fine Art got it. Can you give, um, Clark Fine Art, can you give the link for this in the live chat of the other one? I've got the, I mean, it's going, but it's hard to flip over. And this wasn't even my fault this time. I had nothing to do with what just went wrong. Um, it just OBS freezed up and had some kind of an error and gave me the finger. Um, I don't even know how to get the link. I can't get back to the other. Okay, I can. Hold on. Let me try this. Unless the chat may have just crap or gone completely. Let me fix this. Um, copy. And then I'm going to post this. I should be able to do one more thing. Luckily, I'm, I'm doing okay time-wise on this one or this could have been a real problem. Um, live. Let me add a... Um, And let me pin that comment and we should be good. Okay. So let me make sure I don't close the wrong thing now as I close these down. And we're back. Okay. I think we are good now. Sorry about that. Yeah, what happened, it randomly OBS said there was some error, gave me a white screen. So that was fun. Um, but we also had another super chat for the boys from D Lynn Creative Art. You boys want a super chat? Come here. Let's see, I don't know, it made us crash last time. There you go. Let everybody get over here. Good boys. I don't know, your last super chat treat me, uh, caused us to crash. Had nothing to do with it. Go lay down, you're good, lay down. Okay, all done, lay down. You know what, Gibson, no, if you're gonna crunch it into 100 treats, 100 pieces, no, lay down, no, 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 no. We're not gonna lick crumbs off the floor now. If you're gonna crunch it into a million pieces, you need to do that in your bed, lay down, which is what he normally does. He's like, I'm gonna stand here and lick, lick crumbs off the floor. Wade, lay down. Um, thank you so much, Dean Lund from Creative Arts, too, for that super chat. Okay, let's focus and get back to work. Sorry about that break. So, nice thing is, this is dry. So the next thing that I need to do on this guy, oops, is pray that OBS, stop it, OBS, you're already being weird. Why are you being weird? Like, there's no reason for that, that they don't, stop being weird. Okay. So let's go ahead. I need a cream color. So I'm going to take a little bit. Oops, that's not even the color I want. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to mix some white and a little bit of my yellow ochre. That will work. Let's pull a little bit of my red oxide because it's right there and I think it'll make it pretty. And I just need a light color. I've got to have a decent amount of water because, again, we're using the rake brush. So just like the liner brush, that won't work. Why am I getting spam calls right now? Nobody call me. Okay. There we go. Let's see if this is light enough. Mm, I think it could go a little bit lighter. Some more white in that. A lot more white in that. And let's see. How about now? Mm, maybe we'll do it this way and then a few highlights with white. That sounds, that sounds like a good plan. Okay, pay attention to the direction of the feathers. Those are a bit too chunky. I'm pushing a little too hard, got a little too much paint on there. 
There we go, much better. Again, pay attention to the direction. Make sure that the dark areas poke through. I actually like that good enough. I'm gonna do the rest of the highlights with a liner brush so that I get a few of the more wispy looks. some white paint, thin that with a decent amount of water. Just a few of these little wispy guys, a little too much water on there. I'm going to dab that a bit on my paper towel. And what I'm doing is just adding highlights to the clumps I already made. I'm not necessarily like just, you don't want to just put a bunch of random lines all over because this goes back to that whole we don't want confetti look but this gives me a bit more control. It is very rare that I will use a liner brush or that a, I'll use a rake brush and I don't come back through with a liner brush for little details. This helps you to get a more natural look by refining what you had because the, the rake brush has a tendency to make things look a little too uniform. This will help me break that up, but the rake brush also saves a lot of time because I got a lot of little lines very quickly. So using them together is the way to go for me. Like, for pretty much everything when I do use the rake brush. Just clean up a few little guys in here, give me some more little floofs there, and then we can start the snow. Oh, I need to get a little bit of a shadow under his wing as well. Let's do that real quick. We need to dry that. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, pull a little bit more dark. I'm just fussing over things more than I probably need to, but I'm gonna pull a little bit more. In these dark ones, there we go. Okay, now shadow right under that wing. So I'm gonna use some red oxide and a little bit of black, not too much black because I don't want it that dark. Those two though give me a more brownish tone. And the reason that I don't usually buy brown, like just get brown already made, is the brown by Liquitex Basics, I'm just gonna wipe this right under the wing for a shadow. The brown from Liquitex Basics tends to be a bit it, it goes bad faster, like it gets kind of clumpy and um, dries in the, the container um, before I use it all. Whereas the red oxide and the black don't, and I can just mix those two together. I don't use brown that often, so I'm just going to get a little bit more of the cream in here. There we go. Oh, I love him. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and get some snow. I'm going to grab a older, oh, where are my older damaged brushes? Here's one. And some white paint and some water. And I'm keeping this really basic because I basically just want this entire bottom piece to be white. And a little bit of the gray will show through. Oh, apparently I've got some teal mixed in there too, which kind of works on this. But this gives me that nice rough edge. I'm going to let a little teeny bit through here of that base shadow. Not much. And then as we get down, this pretty much just becomes more solid. Not a lot of shading in here. I mean a little bit. That's why I'm not just going to take a brush and paint it solid. And then I'll be flicking some snow on top. So it looks like he's currently sitting or it's currently snowing. But see how now I've got this little, little bit of texture in there.
And this is why I didn't just take like a filbert and paint it solid. This gives me a, um, well, it looks like more like snow. Nice fluffy. Ah, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm excited. I love how that came out. That was better than I hoped. You know, you expect it to look good, but you also are realistic. And you know, when you do it quickly, it's not that. This came out great. I love how that up against that gray worked so well. Yay. Okay, where is my palette knife? I lost it again. I use that thing all the time. I don't even remember when the last time I used it. I know it was for a live stream. Where have you disappeared to? Hmm. I'd probably rather use a palette knife than make a total mess of my hands. I guess I use the back of a paintbrush, but that never works as good. Like, and the annoying part is it's pro oh, maybe it fell back there. Hold on, let me make sure it didn't just fall behind the easel somewhere. Don't mind me, just climbing under my easel. It's, uh, yep, that's where it was, it fell back there. Oh, that's not even that, that's a soft tool. Well, I found something I've been missing. Oh, I found a tube of paint, I found a few paint brushes. There's a surprising lack of spider webs back here, that's kind of surprising. Well, two good paint brushes, so there's that. Let's move those up. Maybe it's in here. I'm sorry, I don't mean to waste your guys' time while I look for all my crap, but that's apparently what we're gonna do tonight. This is gonna have to work. So this I bought for, um, it's like a <laughs> cake thing. Um, I don't think this one is actually for, I don't know. But this one I have for doing, um, um, pores, acrylic pores, so you can kind of smooth stuff out. We're going to use that instead of a palette knife because I don't know where in the world my palette knife is right now. So we're just going to dab some water. You have to get water in this, but if your brush that you're flicking with gets too wet, it doesn't work well anymore either. So let's see if I'm too wet yet. Nope. Oh, it's perfect. Oh my gosh. I love it. Look at this snow. Okay, not too much, that's it. Oh my gosh, I love this painting. This came out so good for, even with all the drama we had, he just came so good, on so good. Sneaks, uh, Wade is wearing a belly band because someone decided to mark in the house and we're not playing those games. I'm not living in dog markings, so someone can't be trusted, he gets to wear that. He hasn't done it again since then, but like, you go on the couch or something like that, I can't clean that all the way. So no, you get to wear a belly band. Anyway, so there we go. The one thing I don't like, I don't know if you can see the spot here, it's a lot brighter in person. I don't like that one. I'm gonna take a little bit of water and scoop him up. If that doesn't work enough, I'm gonna take a little bit of black. There we go. I feel like that one spot for some reason was just drawing attention to in a weird place. But oh my gosh, I am so happy with this painting. Let me dry this and then I can sign it. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to sign this until the next day because if I run my hand over one of those wet snow blobs, we're going to have some troubles, but I'll sign it probably here. It'll be light. It won't be real dark because I want the focus to be on the bird, but that came out so good. The one thing I do want to do though is add a single bright snow flake on right here. There was a dark spot on the canvas. Problem solved. Dark spot gone. There we go. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. Let me, whoops. Oh, weird. Elgato doesn't work right now. That is odd. Um, okay, whatever. So here we go. There is the finished painting. 
It looks better in person because it's a little bit washed up. There we go. You can kind of see there. There you can see the lighting a little bit better. But yay. I'm so happy with him. That came out good. As, not bad for a night where the live, the live stream crashed. Wow, Elgato does not work at all, huh? The light part does. Yeah, we're having some issues here. Yeah, this whole, I bet a restart of the computer would fix it, but we're obviously not gonna do that right now. So, okay. Oh, my hair looks like I've never brushed it a day in my life. The joys of long hair. I need a haircut desperately. Um, okay, so now we will move on to your questions. Again, this guy is available if you wanna bid on him. Um, I don't think we have any bids on him yet. Uh, auction has started, no bids. And if you are trying to bid and you're having issues and nobody else has won, let me know and um, just email me lisa at if it has not, if no one won by the end of the thing. And who, the first person who contacts me at 10, you can, you can get this guy. Uh, Moody Roan said, treats for the hungry boys. I said, thank you for getting me back painting. And oh, that's awesome. I can't change cameras, but you boys can come over here. You boys want a super chat? You'll see them when they come over here. Thank you so much. Say yes, thank you. These are our favorites. We love treats. Oh, look, go lay down. Notice Gibson did not do, go lay down, go lay down, go lay down, Gibson. He didn't pull the, I'm gonna crunch it into a million pieces, spit it on the floor and eat them all individually that time. I guess, cause he learned I wasn't gonna let him do that. The last time, uh, dogs are so funny. Gibson down, he's just standing there like, I'll just stand here then. You're all, okay, so let's go through your art questions. Um, actually, I wanna put a lid on my palette so I can save that paint. And I will say, if you're using a different brand of paint, it may not stay wet for as long as mine does. The Liquid Tex Basics just, I love, one of the things, there's many reasons I love them. One of them is that they don't dry as fast. So they still dry fast, they're still acrylics, but they just, like I've put my Liquitex heavy body or the soft body in here, those dry quick, much quicker than the Liquitex basics. Okay. So questions. Oh, there's a new bid for auction, yay! So okay, it's working. Um, you got a home, buddy. I mean, you're guaranteed at least at this point. Wow, there's a lot of paint on my hands. Um, where did this go? I'm so, like, when the live stream starts the whole, I'm gonna have a fit and not work anymore, it makes you very distracted and very hard to focus on things. That's kind of where my brain's at right now, so. Okay, so some of these questions came from our Patreon Discord first um, today, so people were submitting questions earlier, so we're gonna start with those. And then if you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave those now, and we'll be answering those next. So the first one is from Susie. She said, oops. That just jumped. She said, I love the way that OMS brings the darker shades to life. I don't feel like the powder blender has that impact. Am I doing something wrong or do I need more pigment? Powder blender, I know what you mean. You need a lot of layers of this powder blender. I do find it to be a bit dark, more difficult to get like black, really black with powder blender. In those cases though, you can use OMS. OMS works fine with powder blender. So I would have built up my base, base layers and then you can go right over, like uh, if you're using sanded paper, which is what I would recommend with, with powder blender, go ahead and use OMS on those darker layers. Like maybe put a layer of your colored pencil and uh, with black, get those in there and blend them out with OMS, let it dry. And then you can keep building from there with some of your uh, powder blender. You can experiment. I haven't done too much experimenting that way, but it would absolutely work. Now, the way that I've used OMS with Powder Blender is for my final layers. So those layers that you need really, really dark towards the end, that's where I typically am going to start using OMS. But make sure when you do, you have used your uh, texture fixative. You have to have a good layer, like a really good layer of that between areas where you were blending with Powder Blender and areas where you did just colored pencil and OMS. If you don't, if you use your powder blender and you're blending and then it, you, you're ready to, you, like you put more colored pencil and you wanna blend with OMS and you go straight on that to that, you create a paste that like kind of pulls areas off. So as long as you've sprayed your texture fixative, like get a good layer on there, you can, and it dries completely, you can go ahead and do your colored pencil and OMS to get those darks just that bit like more punch there. But 
And you might be thinking, well, why would I bother with powder blender? Because it gives you this amazing soft look that it looks a lot like pastels, but with colored pencils. So like you, you may have to adjust a little bit to get things a little bit darker, but you can get them dark enough with, with powder blender. It takes a bit more layering for sure. So I know what you're talking about, but um, yeah, you can certainly still use OMS though. If you're having a hard time building it up to get that dark, go ahead and put your, your texture fixative and then do your colored pencil and uh, OMS just on the darker, like anywhere you want clean too. I've done that where I wanted edges just a bit sharper because with, that's one of the things that's so great with powder blender is you get that soft look. Now you can still get without using OMS a sharp edge, but let's say you want even sharper, even more precise because you're on sanded paper, which is kind of bumpy. Go ahead and use your OMS for those final layers, like the little edges, little details. It gives you a really, really, that's what I've done. It gives you such a cool effect. But again, texture fixative down anywhere where you've had powder blender, get that texture fixative everywhere before you, you even mess with powder blend or with OMS. And if that happens where you're like, oh, I thought it had it sprayed well enough and it created that paste, it's not the end of the world. You just need to work, you know, let it dry and then work over it to fix it. So it's not like you've ruined anything. Trust me, I know because I've had it happen. So that is, oops, here we go. So next we have, Angela said, can you show everyone exactly how you use your Monsters container and glass palette? Masterson, uh, no, uh, I think she's specifically asking you how to use it to keep acrylic paint wet for extended storage use. Okay, yes, actually, great question. And that's convenient because I have it. Oh, is this gonna mess with me if I try to, let's change it this way. Nope, nope. Okay, so here it is. It's like Tupperware. It's um, actually, let's, this is really hard to work with. You don't realize how, attached to the stream, the Elgato stream deck until you can't use it anymore. My gosh. So this is what the box itself looks like. This one, I want to say it's a nine by 12 size, 11 by 14. I forget. I have the link, whatever link I have for the glass palette, that's the size you want to get for that one it, you, so that it fits exact. But this, it's really good Tupperware essentially. So in this, how, see how bendy it is? That's because this is super old. When you first get it, it is going to be stiff as a board and it's gonna be a pain. It's, you're gonna be fighting with it, pushing super hard to try to get the lid on or off. That's normal. And I'm not gonna complain because both, I have two. I've been using them for, the oldest one is probably 20 years old, 25 years old. Oh, older. No, I got it right after we got married. So it's probably about 24 years old. Yeah, wow, I'm old, 23 years old. So anyway, um, let's, Pull this over so you can see now the palette. So when we lift this up, I've got a new wave glass palette that sits inside. Let's see if I can grab it without a palette knife. There we go. It just sets right inside of there and mine fits perfectly. So the, the Masterson's, you just set that in there. Um, the Masterson's, uh, changing. God, this is hard to change cameras this way. The Masterson's container, it gives it, they make their own like stay wet palette and all it's crap. Don't waste your money on that stuff. Like absolute waste of money. Yeah. The glass palette. I don't remember what it cost. It's pricey for a palette worth every penny. Cause you only need to buy it once and it's thick. So some people will just use like a, a sheet of glass. They got out of a picture frame. Those tend to be thin and more, more prone. Like when you're scraping it, I worry about those breaking um, and just snapping. This is a lot thicker. And this one, I got the one that's painted gray on the bottom. You can get clear, you can get black and I think you can get white. I don't know on the clear one now, but um, I go with gray. So you can really easily see where your white is. <laughs> Trust me, that's more helpful than you would think it is. But um, what else? The, what I usually do is take a paper towel and just fold it up, a wet paper towel, and I will leave that in there. That'll keep the humidity in the box high enough. That is really gonna help keep your paint wet. And that's probably why I was struggling so much tonight with that white paint that had started to dry just a little bit. I didn't leave, I forgot to leave a palette. Actually, why don't I do that right now while I'm thinking about it? We'll just show you how I do that. I'm just gonna take, and it's dirty. It's one I've had on my easel, so I don't need to get like a new paper towel. I'm gonna dip that in the water and Oh, Stream Deck, I appreciate you so much right now. I can't wait to have you back. Um, I'm just going to leave. It's kind of like damp, not sopping, like it's not dripping. Oh, let's use this to clean my fingernails while I'm at it. And I will just leave that in the palette somewhere. That's it. And then I put the lid on it and that is going to keep that, help that paint to stay wet. If that is too wet or you leave it too long, it probably would start to stink. I've never had it grow mold or anything like that. So um, that's never been a problem for me but I change it. Like every time I open this, if I open it to use it again, I'm gonna change that paper towel. Okay. 
Yeah, I know there's a brush under there. I saw that. I'm not willing to dig it out and mess with that right now. I'm having enough problems and technical difficulties tonight. Um, okay. Next, we have from Incredible Raccoon, who has an awesome name. How do you navigate having two different art genres as an artist? I know Lisa also has Surreal Works, and I'm curious what advice she has to offer. The issue that I'm having with, oh, why did you just jump? Uh, the issue that I'm having with doing two art genres is that, my, in my case, they attract two very different audiences. And I feel Lisa's Surreal Work fits so beautifully with her nature work. I'd love to see more, by the way. Um, let's see depending on what it is. So like sometimes I'll do pop art. I still throw that on my website because the subject matter is about the same. But let's say like that I know of an artist who does very adult themed work. And I would recommend like in her case, adult theme and wildlife or nature, two different websites. You can even do like one of the things that art, uh, authors will do that write, like I follow an artist who writes this suit, like or an uh, author, she writes some of her books are like preteen to uh, teenagers would be safe for. There's nothing in there so outrageous that you wouldn't let someone that age write, listen to. But I know that that author also writes extreme adult like, uh, way too spicy for me, we'll say that. She writes some extreme stuff under a different pen name. And the reason for that is that way when somebody is searching, like a kid is like, hey, I wanna read about her dragon stories they're not going to accidentally find out what a lady did with a not what a lady did. Um, we'll just leave it at that. So that is a way to go. Use two different artist names. So I could, let's say I had something that was super extreme that I don't necessarily, I know those two audiences don't mix. I might do La Cree Fine Art and The Bad Cows Art, or maybe not even that. It's something that's so unrelated that people wouldn't even know it was the same person is, is a safer way to go. Now, if it's not to the point where you've got really like, you know, adult theme things, you don't have to worry as much, but let's say you're somebody who paints cars and then you're doing a lot of wildlife, I would keep that on the same website. I would just maybe have a section for cars and a section for wildlife, because that's so far, so far apart. Now on the flip side, I've seen where people on their websites will be like, here are my horses, here are my cats, here are my trees, here are my, and they have 50 different topics for everything. Don't do that, it makes it confusing. Keep your gallery as much as you can in one thing. I would only separate them if there was if it most likely would have two completely different people interested. Any animal, put them all together. Wildlife, animals, throw all that together. I mean, even architecture could go in there. Eh, you could give it its own page. So I would say as far as separating it, it just depends on what it is. And you can do the same thing, let's say for Instagram, where you know people are gonna be like, I followed them for wildlife, why am I suddenly seeing pictures of cars? Okay, maybe have two different accounts, one for your car stuff, one for, you know, if you feel like people are not really understanding the brand there, that might be an option for you. Um, but it depends on how extremely different they are. If it's an adult themed thing, which I know of plenty of artists who do, same thing with art, art, the authors, use a different pen name. Because trust me, if I buy a book from one author thinking, oh yeah, I loved her last book and I read some spicy things of people doing things that I didn't even know people did, I'm probably gonna leave a negative re review. Warn me of that crap. Like, there needs to be a warning, but if they used a different pin name, there you go. You, you, you didn't have to, to deal with that. So I think it just depends on how like far apart your genre, your, your different genres are. So, you know, um, yeah, and Clark Fine Art said, what are your thoughts on separating medium, acrylic versus watercolor or oils? I don't think you should separate them. The only time you separate them is for our art lessons for students because they're looking, the only people who care what medium you're using are the students who are following your lessons. Buyers of the art only care what that art looks like. List what it is obviously on the description, but buyers don't give a crap. Buyer, like it is rare that a buyer, the only time people care is sometimes they think oil paintings are worth more, which isn't a thing, but sometimes people are like, oil paintings are fancier because I heard an oil painting. Like even in books or movies, they'll talk about the oil painting, like uh, whatever, it's dumb, but it, isn't really a thing. So um, depends on it depends on the artist. And so that's always been the thing for me. With the artwork, I mean, you see on my own gallery, I have it all made. I don't even have it listed what it is. No, when on the, the option to shop, it says what it is. But most of my gallery, you can't tell what medium certain things are. Heck, I can't even tell what medium half of them are. I have to go look it up on an old video because I genuinely cannot tell my oils from my acrylics. And when it's been so long, I'm like, I don't know which one that was. If I can't even tell, you think the buyer cares, they do not. Or not the buyer, but the viewer cares, they don't. Students care. Your lessons, go ahead and separate those. 
but for as far as your artwork in a gallery, no. The worst thing you can do, so this is kind of going into website advice. One of the, the worst things you can do on your website is make people have to click more. It, the more they have to click to find what they're looking for, you lost them. My own website is a good example in many cases what not to do. I have way too many options. Simplify that, I need to go through and do that. Too many options, too many things to click to find what you want, you just lost the person. You, uh, people's attention span has gotten so low. We've got to constantly be simplifying things. So yeah, I would definitely not um, separate those. All right, yeah, I would I would put them all together um, as far as medium, no one. And even like Instagram and all that, there'd be no reason to separate that on Instagram. No one cares. Only other artists care. And they don't even care that much. Only if they're trying to take a lesson. Um, let's see, Art of Raven D uh, said, if you do a Christmas glitch, will they have a red hat and big Santa beard? I don't know about the beard, but I'm think yeah, I think I want, that was my plan. I'm thinking a hat. Maybe, maybe have her sitting on a candy cane wearing a hat because you know how she wraps around yes i like it uh dina said if you're drawing a reptile what is the easiest way to draw in the individual scales without losing your place iguana and colored pencils oh man it depends on what size so like you saw me doing on this chickadee um which you can bid on by the way link is in the video description if you're in the u.s oh i can't change again let's oh how do i change this um here we go okay the lighting is weird now because i turned the here there we go that's closer but this is not exact. I'm giving you the hint of, I lost my thing. Um, I'm giving you the hint of feathers. They are not exact. And the scales, you can do the same way as long as you get them going in the right direction, about the right size, all of that. Right shape, right size. They don't need to be everyone exact. But if you're going big, I would go ahead and draw them out as, as exact as you can. And the big thing on something like that, when you've got that level of detail, there's no rushing it. Like, you know how I did the um, snow on this where I'm dabbing it and that's a fairly rushed thing. That works, this is a soft look. If you are doing a reptile, you're not gonna rush that. There's no quick way to make those scales look good. You're gonna sit there scale by scale, shading scale by scale. Like you have to, it, it takes a lot of work. I'm actually gonna be doing um, dragon just, yeah. Wow, you are all in a spicy mood right now. He is all over the place, um, but, See, this is why you don't give meth to your reptiles. I'm kidding, by the way. I, I make jokes like that, which is kind of silly because I've never done drugs in my life, so it's silly coming from me. And then I, I say it and then realize somebody's gonna get all, oh my God, she's doing what with her animals? No, I'm like the biggest prude of all the things. Um, anyway, moving on, that is irrelevant. But Dragon is all wound up right now. Anyway, I wanna do, I'm gonna do a digital painting with him and we'll be doing the individual scales. And so no matter what medium you're interested in, that one would be a good one to see. We are going to slowly paint every individual scale because there is a lot on the face. And that's really the thing. There's no rushing through it. There's no skipping over that level of work. It's just gonna be a lot of work. Okay. Um. And colored pencils, I think, will be awesome for the iguana. But, and for that, I would get a base like medium green or a light green and then just build up my darker details in there. But it's going to take time. Um, where are we? Python said, how do you dry brush with oils? I'm so curious. I want to try it. Same way as you do it with acrylic. Very little paint, very little medium. It's like almost a dry brush. Like, that's it. The end. Um, same exact. It, it's the same thing. It just doesn't look the same because oils stay wet, so they kind of blend out where acrylics don't so much. Uh, D. Lynn Creative Art said, question, when you fixed the picture you hated, how did you know what color to use to get it the way you wanted it to look? And for those who need more experience, do you have any correcting suggestions? So that part of the question, I'm not, my brain is not in a place where I have any idea what, what is being asked there so much as correcting suggestions. I don't know how to answer that part. But as far as how did I know what color to use to get it the way I wanted? So which part? I knew I wanted it darker. So the painting, if you've not seen it, the video that went up yesterday of um, the, the with the cuttlefish and the tuna, my canary who was eating plants that started the whole drama. But um, for that video, I messed up twice on it. I, and I, not even messed up. I just, I painted it and realized I don't like these colors. It was a daytime scene. I don't like daytime scenes. I left it sitting back there. You probably saw it on live streams. It was sitting behind me for so long while I was like, it's fine. I'm going to learn to love it. I did not learn to love it. I just learned to hate it even more because I don't like the, it was too light. So I decided to go ahead and go over it with oil so I could adjust the colors. And I went with like a phalo blue in the sky and then I had the bottom of the water more of a, a teal and it clashed. It didn't look good together. So 
that decision, I don't even know why I decided what I did other than that I was trying to make it a nighttime scene. But the part that I changed, that I fixed, the final part of fixing it, was I just needed to take the same color, and I chose indigo, and put it in the sky and the water. And it just brings those two colors closer together, which you can see in the video. I, I feel like I should, yeah, I don't know how to explain this in a way that I didn't in the video. Like, I, any color would have worked. I could have gone, I wouldn't have gone teal or phalo blue. I could have just painted the water over again to make that phalo blue, or I could have painted the sky teal, but teal in a sky is typically weird. There are some exceptions, but usually it's a, it wouldn't have worked in that case. Um, so I just picked a color that was a little bit more neutral, indigo. It's not like super purple. It's not super teal. It's not anything. It just kind of feels a little bit in the middle of the blues, but has a lot of black in it, kind of the dark. And that just brought those two together. It just darkened everything and it, adjusted but I'm not explaining this well go watch the video I don't know how to explain it but like I feel like I'm making it more confusing than it than the video was I just picked a color I picked a color that was kind of in the neutralish ish way to go and it just made it brought those two together I'm not going to even talk about it anymore and I apologize for that dealing creative arts it's a good question but I am making it way more I mean I should I don't know how to say how I chose it other than pick a color and put it in the sky and the water so they match that is, I guess that's a simple way to go it go with it. Okay, she, you said you understand what I'm saying. Okay, good. Because I feel like I so overcomplicated that and making it worse. Um, this is what happens when you get stressed out because live stream's not doing what the live stream's supposed to be doing. Um, let's see. Where were we? Fly Me to the Moon said, what is that brush that you did the snow with? It looked quite fluffy and stick, stickly. Stick, it's kind of stiff. So it's any of these. When you get a brush... You get these sets. Um, do I have one? Maybe I have one. Hold on. Let me see. I may have one that I can show you. They usually come. Oh, I don't know where it is then. No, you know how you get those sets of brushes that are like it's a canvas holder and it comes with a bunch of brushes, you will usually get a bunch of flat and a bunch of round. So you get like these. You get a selection of stiff, they're usually just more of a cream color, but you get the flat ones and then you get the round ones. And it's cheap, they're like anywhere between 10 and $20 usually. Depends like Michael's has them, you can get them on sale sometimes. Um, they are super, super cheap, but there are certain techniques that they, they're not, I don't like them very much when they're brand new, but when they are used and they, I don't clean them, I intentionally do not clean them well. You can tell mine are really tinted, but not just from use, it's just from, I intentionally don't clean them super well. Like I never, I almost never use a brush cleaner on these, I just use water. And over the years, they start to stiffen up and they get to where they work so perfectly for certain techniques, um, like sponging on there. So that is all these are. They, there's not even like a name brand on here, China. It says 582 China, like, I mean, cheap. And yeah, those are what I've been using forever. And I just intentionally don't rinse them super, super well when, in the beginning so that they get kind of stiff. And I never rinse them with my soap and water, just water to let them get more stiff. I should make a video on that so I can show better, but um, let's see. The optic nerve said, I'm new here as your live stream appeared on my YouTube feed this evening. Yay, I was wondering if you ever work abstractly. Um, not really. Only if I do it for like a background, like some a weird background and then a realistic subject over it. I'm not personally super interested in abstract. Although occasionally I'll see an abstract painting that is so pretty that I would love in my own house. And I think I should try to paint that for myself. So I don't want to make it sound like I, I like hate abstract. It's just not a style that I typically am super attracted to. Every once in a while I see one though that I'm like, oh, I want that in my house. That's so pretty. So um, no, but I don't make videos doing abstract at all. Uh, let's see, Art of Raven D said, I have a separate website of erotica and another one of wildlife pets too. Exactly, see, and that is exactly what you should do. I would also use different names. If you're not already, I would not, I don't even want my, like if I were in your place, well, and this is what the authors are. They don't even want the people who like their fantasy young adult, you know, teen girl things to find their super adult stuff. Like you don't even want those two names associated. So um, that would be ideal. But yes, definite website, absolutely. Jay Cortez, I, I, my brain is gone. I, I normally feel like I could say that better, and I am, my brain feels so fried right now. Um, let's 
Stop complaining and work, Lisa. Uh, the only reason the old masters used oil was because that's what they had. If Da Vinci had access to acrylics, he'd have loved them. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely agree. Uh, Dylan Creative Art said, yes, when I last used Masterson, it kept my paint wet for over a week. I've had like a month later, I'll come back and it's still good. Like that thing is, am depend not always. I think it depends too. It seems like the more paint you have in there, the more, well, obviously, because then there's less air in there. It'll stay wet even longer. Um, let's see. DJ said, what did you name your beard a dragon? Dragon. <laughs> so, oh, okay, so we thought it was a girl and I call, was calling her Blanche. I called her a Nixia because of the World of Warcraft uh, dragon. But then it seemed she, like, I like human names on reptiles. I think it's hilarious. So, like, I named my, my spider, my jumping spider is named Charlie, like, because I think it's cute for a boy or a girl. And I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. But, um, I, we, I was calling, when I thought it was a female, I was calling her Blanche, but I'm pretty sure it's a male. And then we just kept calling him Dragon, and Dragon just stuck. Also, and this is going to sound terrible, I was kind of hoping not to get super attached to him. So he has what, there's a virus that Bearded Dragons get that is extreme, like they pretty much are all carriers at this point. Um, whether or not they get sick from it is another story. But there's a virus, ADV or something like that, that they get. And especially when they're super young or super old, it affects them more. And it was, I mean, he was having, I don't want to call them full on seizures, all but one. The one of them, he flipped over on his back, leg stiff in the air. There was another one. I mean, he just shake and he could kind of walk, but he was shaking so bad. Um, super sickly, didn't eat well, wasn't growing, never shed. I mean, it, it got bad and it, it wasn't until I start. So anyway, the point is, I didn't want to get attached. I might lose them in the reptile place. They breed them um, that I got them from. They said they would exchange them for me, but I'm like, okay, well, for one thing, I've already exposed his tank to whatever it is, so I would have to change out anything. Two, well, what are they going to do with him? Like, I, I still wanted to give him a chance. Like, I knew he was not doing well, but let's give him a chance. I mean, he'd been dewormed. That wasn't the issue. So, um, and that wouldn't have been the symptoms we were having anyway with the the shaking so I was really trying hard not to get attached because how heartbreaking right but also I want to give him the best chance he has and I didn't want him to go back to them like and if I get another from them it's just gonna have it's gonna be at least a carrier of the virus obviously they're and this virus seriously is that common when if there's a stress to their system or again when they're very young which mine was it's sometimes they have a hard time growing through it all of I started giving my dandelions in end of was it May April by May, he was shedding nonstop. He grew so fast, a little too fast, like kind of scary fast. I'm hoping that doesn't cause issues for him later on. But he grew, grew, he caught up in his size. He's still a little on the small side for, I think, he's over a year now. But anyway, um, that is the reason I didn't get too, like, trying to pick a name for him. It was just, we kept calling him Dragon. I mean, I tried Blanche for a while, and then obviously, when I thought, I'm pretty sure it's a boy. I think you're a boy. But, um... I'll find out if he ever lays eggs, I guess. But yeah, so that's what happened there. Now I'm attached to him. But like when he started doing well, there was no way you were not going to get attached. You're like, okay, I can let myself be attached. But yeah, that is that is the story of Dragon being Dragon, which is the most boring name. And I tried to talk mad into him. I'm like, let's change it to like Roger or something. I don't know, some human name. And he, he refuses. He's like, I'm only calling him Dragon. Fine, whatever. So he is Dragon. Um... Let's see. Angela said, when you price your art, do you charge more if it took longer? Absolutely. freaking lootly Heck yes. Um, example, more for colored pencil than paint, or do you have a standard for price per size? Uh, yeah. Uh, if I'm going to pay, if, it, if something I can do, let's say this bird, this size, in acrylics, I got done in a night. So, so well, if I were to charge on my website, let's say $150, $200. Like the auction obviously goes lower, but if I were to put this on my website, we're probably looking yeah, closer to 200. So if that same thing though, to do that in colored pencil, an eight by 10 like that, I would have spent a minimum full week, minimum, depending on how much detail. But yeah, that would take, oh God, I would not want to do that snow in colored pencil. That would take so long um, to get it to look like that. So yeah, I'm charging probably closer to four or 500 for colored pencil because it's a a lot more work so yes i charge more um if the paint piece has more detail more whatever absolutely i charge more so i mean it's by price to an extent but like by medium it's more mostly by price but within the medium so an acrylic eight by ten most of the time going to be about the same there's some variation you know some obviously i put more work into but most they're pretty close um but like then the difference between an eight by ten colored pencil and an eight by ten acrylic completely different uh, let's see. 
Python said, it's hilarious. I was talking to some guy and he mentioned I love to paint. He asked what I like to paint, paint with. Why though? I said I work in oils and his face lit up like I was the next Raphael. Yeah, it's where people who don't know much about art, they're the ones who get all like, oh, oh an oil painting. That's so unique and rare. And uh, I mean, oils are cool. It's just, it's funny that, that attitude. Uh, Shannon said, Lisa, large stencil brush would work like that too. Have one from years ago. Yes, you know, stencil brushes are perfect for that. Um, they're, yes, but they're also large. So sometimes they're a little complicated to use when they get that big, but absolutely. Um, oh, I've seen small ones. I should get some. I, know, I haven't even thought of buying them for that. <laughs> you are absolutely right though. Um, and if you're not sure what she's talking about, for the stiff brushes like that, a stencil brush would be the texture you'd want for that. So yes. Um, let's see. Art of Raven D said, I've gained some pet portrait clients though through the NSF crowd, but I agree keeping the same name on both was a mistake. A couple of nonprofits wanted nothing to do with me because of the, yeah, yeah. Um, DJ said, he reminds me of the one I had. He was a rescue. I got him back to health, but he had MBD really bad. That is the, th uh, MBD. If you're unfamiliar with this, um, MBD is metabolic bone disease that bearded dragons get. And I swear the majority of them probably get it. And it's solely, like it is completely from, well, no, I take it back. Because sometimes there is a genetic factor if you get a baby baby that has it. Um, that I was reading about this recently. There's a genetic factor that makes it so that they just can't, wait, wait what was theirs? There was something that babies could have an issue with. But anyway, the main thing with metabolic bone disease, it's from improper lighting and improper supplement. You have to have them both. And if you don't have the exact right light, strong enough, everything, and the pet stores give you all the wrong information. The setup that a pet store, if you went in and were like, oh, how cute at PetSmart, this cute bearded dragon. They're gonna walk you through the setup to get, they've got this kit that says it's for bearded dragons. It's not big enough to even have the potential, even on a baby. It can't give you the proper heat variation because you need a hot side and a cold side. You're not gonna have the proper temperature. It's all gonna be too hot or all too cold, but in, usually in that case, it's gonna to be too hot. The dragon doesn't have a way to really cool down. And they outgrow it very quickly. So by the time they're a year old, they need to be in 120 gallon minimum. Most people are not going to upgrade. They don't realize that. They see this little baby in the pet store and the pet store is like, yeah, put them in a 20 gallon and then upgrade them to a 40. Okay, a 40 is the baby get, baby dragon size. That You could start with a 120. You don't have to start with a baby size. I'd start with baby size. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, you're not giving them the right calcium. You don't have the right UVB bulb. And there is only two types of UVB bulbs that I would trust. One is, uh, what is the Repsun? Uh, I might be getting that wrong. Um, the T... What am I using? Hold on, I'll tell you. I don't even need to look it up. That one in the Arcadia, 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 whatever one. There's two different types. That's it. The, the majority of what the pet stores will sell you, red bulbs for the night, heat lamp, like the heat basking rocks or like a, rock, a heat plug-in rock. Like they give you so much stuff that is so unsafe. But anyway, it leads to a metabolic, it, it makes it so the dragon isn't getting enough calcium. It's not absorbing right, it can't get it enough. So what it does is it pulls that calcium from the bone. So the bones now are turning into mush and they're kind of like, and their chin is all low, like chin in the mouth. When you look at it in the mouth and the chin, are, the jaws are not lined up right, that's generally metabolic bone disease. The spine will be all deformed. It's very, very painful and it is completely avoidable if people did research and didn't just blindly listen to a pet store. And I understand that pet stores give bad, like I, I get where people get themselves into that, but you know, it's 2023, it's not that freaking hard to Google how to properly take care of an animal. So even though the pet store lied to you, go home and better Google that and upgrade your setup because you're making an animal slowly die and it drives me crazy to see people, oh, he's fine, he's been fine for two years. And you look at the photo and you're like, that's not fine, that is not what that animal should look like. That is the most deformed, like no. So yeah, anyway, um, where did I go off on that tangent? Oh, the metabolic bone disease. Yeah, it's painful, very, very painful for the animal and so freaking common. People are just so irresponsible. It, oh, okay, I'll move on. Um, let's see, Brittany says, I used to paint in oils when I was taking classes at public community college and then public uh, four-year, and then a public four-year public research university. I just don't paint in oil paints anymore because, I don't have the rest of the question. Um, maybe we'll come back to that. Oh, because about some of the about some of the thinners, etc., being bad for me in this apartment since none of the rooms, especially my bedroom, are ve well ventilated. Yeah, I've never had a problem. I mean, I've painted in a small room. I'm not saying that's necessarily the best thing to do, but I mean, using the Mona Lisa Odorless or Gamsol, it's not going to be as harsh. Some paint thinners, though, you really want a very well ventilated area. 
Um, I always keep the lid on though. That's the thing too. When I paint with oils, I'm not one to use OMS while I'm working. I only use it to clean my brushes. So it's open for a couple, like two minutes max, and then it's closed. Like I don't leave it open all the time. Like, so paint thinner is not really even used except cleaning brushes for how I work. So that's probably why I don't um, worry as much about it. But anyway, um, let's see. Angela said, sometimes I use my fine mist sprayer over the paint on my palette because just before putting it on top of the masters. And yeah, that would help. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said, what did the dandelion contribute? Oh, did I not finish that story? I don't know. We know that dandelions have a ton of medicinal purposes. That's actually why they were brought to this country. They were very, very valuable at one point. Now we consider them a weed. And that's what I was taking the weeds out of my backyard because I knew there were no pesticides back there so I could safely feed it to them. But he, and it was so hard to get him to eat anything at the time anyway, and he really liked the flowers. So it was like, well, if you'll eat it, here, add as much as you want. And I'll, something turned around. I don't know if it simply built up his immune system. I don't know. It's got like antimicrobial, antibacterial, anti-words of all the anti-things. I don't know what made the difference. All I know is that's the only thing I changed. And he he just, it was a complete turnaround. Like he he was so sickly as a baby. He His eyes were always like half open when they were open. He slept way too much. Very He'd get up and move around sometimes, but I didn't hold him at all because if I did, the shaking would get worse. It's like any stress would bring that on. So it was just kind of like, okay, keep him as low stress as possible. Now, I haven't seen him do the shaking thing at all in, God, probably not since early summer. So maybe before that. It was around May. I don't know. When he started growing like crazy, it was just like completely different animal. I joke that I think Matt, like, found the old one too sickly and swapped him out for this one because that is not the same animal. Like it is crazy the difference in him. I, so I, I don't know. My theory is it built up his immune system so he was able to, to not fight off. I don't think it cured the virus obviously, but I think that it gave him enough that he could like fight against it. I don't know. But I tell you what, I got an arrow garden and it's behind me back there. I don't know if you can kind of see the, the light right there. That's for my arrow garden. I grow dandelions now for him. So he always has, dan every day he gets dandelion leaves. Him and tuna and the uh, I, a nugget. I always give nugget dandelion leaves to Matt's parrot lit. Okay. Um, chicken doesn't eat them, so I don't bother with him. Let's see. Python said, I love colored pencil. Until they see my work, they think I draw like a child. When they say I work in oils, they respect me. Um, in an art sense, skyrockets. Yeah, no, that's exactly, you are so right on that. When I tell people that I work in colored pencil, I I tell, well, what people will do is they'll say, oh, what, when they find out, like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an artist. What medium do you work in? I just say all mediums. I work in everything. Um, I can't even say I don't work in pastels because I work in pan pastels. I say it counts. So yeah, I pretty much work in just about everything. And if I don't, I can. So, I mean, it, when you get to where you, Art is more about understanding your values, your composition, all of that. The medium doesn't really matter. Once you get to where you're really comfortable with the other things, you, I can, I'm not a good watercolor artist. I can make cool things look cool though, because I understand values, composition, and all of those. So even though I'm not good at watercolor, like I would not consider me myself an expert at watercolor, I can still make really pretty paintings because I have a general understanding of lights and dark. So it's easier for you, same thing. You, it's easier for me, I just say I, I, I work with all me in all mediums because you are right. When you say colored pencil, like, oh, that's cool. Crayons, huh? Do you, do you look windows? So yeah. Um, let's see. Kendra said, when are you posting the colored pencil magazine for Patreon? Really looking forward to it. Tomorrow, probably. Cause yeah, tomorrow. Um, I need to put that on my planner, but somebody dolphin soul remind me you want somebody to remind you all the time of everything. Carissa, Dolphin Soul, talk to her. Um, but she, yes, yeah, she'll remind me. Um, I need to get that up. I got it edited, it's ready to go. I even got the thumbnail. I need to upload it and then post it for you guys. And if you are, if you ha get the Colored Pencil Magazine, there's still time, you can go get it. I've got a, like the, my tutorial is in this month's issue. So yay, that's always so fun. Actually, you wanna see? Hold on, we got a minute. I'll show you. These magazines, like God, the print quality is freaking incredible. It's thick. So that is not my art. That is amazing. We're just gonna skip through. Oh my, seriously. So look at the featured artist's colored pencil work. Like, oh my gosh, this month is so good. 
Um, let's see. Here's my lesson. So there's my article in the magazine. So this is the little bird that um, this lesson is in, in colored, the colored pencil magazine. So, and then there's the finished one there. So that is my article. Um, that will, the video though that goes with that is tomorrow. I gotta get that posted. Let me put this back because I don't wanna mess up my issue. Okay, let's see, next question. DJ said, yes, you need, to, you need great lighting and the tank needs to be large and they need good greens and fruit. Yeah, not even fruit, they actually shouldn't have fruit. Fruit will cause uh, mouth rot if they get too much of it. it. It can, I shouldn't say it will, it can. They shouldn't get very much of it. It's kind of like a kid eating candy. So it's not super great for their insides and all of that. Um, it gives a lot of stress to like kidneys and stuff. They really don't need that much sugar. But the big, my the, the thing that makes me super paranoid is when you see what a dragon with, with mouth rot looks like, because they've been eating the wrong thing, like, whoo, nerp. Um, so he really doesn't get fruit. He gets uh, collard greens. I actually have my other arrow garden. I just started growing mustard greens and collard greens from him. Because I buy it, but I'd rather grow it myself. And then it doesn't have pesticides at all. Like there's no even risk of that. So I think especially in his condition, let's avoid that as much as possible. I know you can get organic, but I don't know. I just trust it better if I can grow it myself. Um, so I grow that and then the, I have another batch of dandelions. Actually, when the arrow gardens were on sale, I bought two new ones this, this year. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of greens going for him and the birds to eat regularly. He's, he's sitting right now. I you're a derp. He's sitting like his legs are back. His front legs are behind him and he's sitting like arched up against a rock like a, he, that's kind of funny, like a backward C, not a C, an L. Yeah, now your legs are where they belong. That was funny. Um, they look like they get, they managed to get so comfy, but yeah, lots and lots of different like variety of greens, but his main ones are collard, collard greens, mustard greens, dandelions, of course, um, dandelion leaves. Um, and uh, squash, what, butternut squash. He loves sweet potato a little too much, so we give that on sometimes too. Um, let's see. Brittany said, "Would you rather? Would you ever try the Turner acrylic gouache? Since I have found the Turner acrylic gouache to be good for an acrylic gouache. What? It's a lot of. Would you ever try the Turner acrylic gouache? Since I have found the Turner acrylic." Wash, say that 10 times fast to be good for an acrylic. What? I am not reading that properly. I'm not going to say I wouldn't try it, but it's not on my list to buy anytime soon. I am going to buy because somebody funded me that, and I wrote down the name and I don't remember right now off the top of my head, uh, sent a super chat last week for the M. Graham acrylic paints. I'm going to be doing a review of those. Um, I haven't gotten paid for the YouTube that batch yet. So, but I will be ordering those very, very soon. So we'll have that video but that's not gouache, so that does not answer your question. Shannon Wolf said, uh, pet stores shouldn't be able to sell them if they can't provide proper information. Obviously, they aren't looking after them, right after them either. Oh, God, no. I don't think any pet store. Now, I'm not one of those who thinks you shouldn't be able to get pets. Like, you should. I'm not a paid idiot. Absolutely, you should be able to get, go to breeders who are more responsible and ethical and the animals are being taken care of better. Not that all breeders are ethical. I get that, but it's like, they may not be, but every single pet smart is unethical. Every single pet coat is unethical in where they're getting the animals from quite often and how they're cared for. I mean, the, the care, I know I used to work at Petco, the care and the, what the district managers would tell you to tell people. We were literally told, and I'm saying literally not in the teenage girl version of it, but the actual meaning of the word. We were literally told, if you don't know, make it up. Just sound like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. My answer is always going to be, if you, because when people would come in and their animal was sick, like, what do I get for this problem? Take it to a vet is what you get. Like, it needs a vet. But, oh my God. And I'm not saying that every district manager tells their people that, but the Petco and PetSmart are so unethical in just about every, like, no. They should sell supplies, but their employees, and their employees think they know what they're talking about because Petco trained them or PetSmart trained them things. I know, I went through these classes. It's all wrong. Everything from the pet food information, it is all wrong. So unless that person was doing information on, now you may get an employee who knows what they're talking about because they've researched outside of work and they happen to know about that, but those people usually don't last long because they can't tolerate seeing the cruelty that the animals in these pet stores are living through. And then you get the idiots who are like, oh, I rescued this dragon from PetSmart. No, you didn't. You went and bought it and now they're going to replace it. You just, you continued the cycle in, support, in promoting them 
if you if people would stop buying pets from them they would stop carrying them and then that would be so much better but yeah nope it is extremely frustrating um yeah i i could go off for a very long time about the problems with that like le we're lucky we have a reptile store called dfw reptarium near me if you were in the dallas area you've got to check them out them i trust i mean they walked me through when i got dragon stuff and i did already done the research so i knew what i was going in for but this girl walked me through everything and every single thing she helped me get was the exact right thing so i mean obviously it helped that i'd already done my research but she knew what she was talking about too and she wasn't even the breeder the breeder works there as well so and now me talking about my dragon having a virus that is not me bashing that breeder that's just unfortunately all of the dragons have it at this point so it is just the nature of bearded dragons in the u.s right now so um but like that dfw reptarium i like them because their employees actually do know proper care of animals versus like pet smart or petco if an employee works there, they either don't know or they won't work there long because they're not going to be able to tolerate watching those animals um, in the conditions they're kept in. Okay, next. Um, the optic nerve said, do you find learning animal anatomy to be difficult? No. I mean, the more you draw something, the more you look at, like, look at the bone structure and really understand. Like, if, if you are having a hard time looking at an animal and, like, you're like, I just see a poof ball, but not understanding why there's this lump on the shoulder. Look at, at photos of bones. Look at photos, animations of the animals moving and walking. There are a ton of animation type videos like that on YouTube that you can see. But the more you draw something the more it makes sense. So, I mean, that was kind of my thing. I just started drawing. And so by the time I got to the point where I even remotely cared about anatomy, because I was just drawing what I saw, I already could look at it and draw what I saw there. So it, it, I guess I did it a little bit backwards. I know some people like to really study anatomy first. I just got good at drawing from a young, you know, a fairly young age. I didn't even start looking at anything to do with anatomy until I was probably in my 20s. So I, it, I can't even say I found it hard because I think I did it backwards. So it wasn't hard because of the way I did. I don't know. Um, all right, Raven D said, yeah, it seems colored pencil and watercolor. Oh, watercolor too. Yeah, it has a net. People have a weird look at it. Um, they think of it as child children's play if you say you work with those. And I think one of the problems too is that both mediums for so long were not light fast. Watercolor has a lot of problems with light fastness. Colored pencil like Prismacolor, we all know that has a lot of problems with light fast. It wasn't until more recent years, you know, let's say around 2010, people started really paying attention. 2012, it really started being something that people were talking about regularly. And then those of us on YouTube are, are trying to tell people more about it. And so that's when I think the awareness of it became a bigger deal. And so like a gallery wouldn't want to sell artwork that they knew was going to fade super soon. So, you know, you had some problems there too with fugitive colors and fug fugitive supplies. So I think we're now we're, we're g like gaining traction and getting respect in those mediums. But yeah, no, that watercolor definitely suffers from it too. Or from the, the view. Moody Roan says, Schminka has a line of acrylics. I bought a tube to try, liking them so far. Interesting. I know I like their watercolor. Python said, the first Patreon tutorial I watched was a bee oil painting. I learned 10 times more from one lesson than art school could probably teach you in five years. Oh, thank you. And oh, you're not wrong. Like, I can't tell you how many times I have heard that. I had students who took like two, three classes with me. One lady, uh, man, I love her. Um, I miss her. She moved up to, she used to be in my area. She moved up to Michigan. But anyway, um, she had told me she had a degree in art. She went to school for art. She's like, I learned so much more from your class in a few weeks than I learned from all four years in college. So she's she really got good. But like she wasn't bad to start with by any means, but like the progression was extremely fast. So yeah, I hear that a lot. Like college, you might get a good teacher, but the chance of finding a good one are not very likely. What usually happens, well, oh God, there was a girl. I'd worked with her for a while. Um, awesome, awesome girl. And her artwork was amazing. She came to me, she loved realism. So we were working with photorealism and, and refining that. She wanted to go to art school, that's awesome. Dad, dad was fine with me, you know, pay, her parents paid for it. So she, uh, she didn't like go into debt as far as I know for it. So there's that bonus. But um, I am not a fan of art school. Like I think art college in almost every case is BS. Like it is, you are just throwing money away because you can take classes from somebody who knows how to do what you wanna learn. Like you should still take classes. You've gotta find a teacher. But you're gonna find a much better teacher outside of college if you go and look for one who produces artwork in your area that produces art that you want yours to look like, that's what you wanna find. Um, in the college, she went to college. She now paints, it looks like she 
Oh, don't finish that sentence the way you were going to finish it. Um, mm, it looks like a child did it and not well done. Like there's abstract, there, there's stylized, there's certain styles that I don't like, but I can also appreciate the skill involved and the balance and all. This is not any of that. This is so painfully bad. Like one was like an underwear drawer and things hanging out, but it wasn't done well. The perspective was bad, but it wasn't bad in a way that it was consistent. Like I was doing this on person purpose, like Picasso. It was just bad. This is what that school did to this girl. She's all proud of it. And that's all I've seen her, her do. It's been years. This was years and years and years ago. That's why I feel comfortable talking about it. But she was such an amazing artist and they turned her into, because that's what the teachers were pushing. They turned her, like it's not even good for what it, what she was doing. It was just and I've seen that so often. And it's like, it did more harm than good. And that wasn't, and I knew her. That wasn't what she wanted to do. That it just, you know, you go to college and they, they're like, no, you're going to do it our way. And our way happens to be horrible. It's just crap. It is crap. So now that said, I have known people who found amazing, amazing teachers and learned a ton. Good freaking luck though. Like you're going to go into debt to maybe find a good teacher. Why don't you just go to find a good teacher outside of school? Way cheaper. And you get to pick the specific teacher that you know you want. You don't have to worry about it. Like if you're doing studio art, having a degree in art, I'm not saying don't be proud of what you work for. Great. But have fun with that debt because that's not a fun way to start your career as an artist. It's hard to have a career as an artist. Starting it tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt is not how you want to start that career. So um, yeah, there's better ways to go than college for art, that's for sure. But um, yeah, no, I've, and I've heard that a lot. People who went to college for four years, got a degree in art, but they come to me to actually learn how to paint. I have had that, like, I can't count how many times. So yeah, kind of crazy. Um, and it, it's not like, oh, I'm better than all the other college. Every teacher is better than the college teachers. Like it is not hard to find a good teacher outside of a college, but it is very hard to find a good teacher inside of a college when it comes to art. So, um, Karina said, I've heard the new pastel mat is different to the old stock. I need to buy more, but I'm concerned. It's not cheap. Have you used new pad? I haven't. I only have the same, like I've only had one pad of that ever. I've not used it enough to even need to replace it. Have you heard good or bad about it? That's concerning. I was really sad when Fabriano Artistico changed because I loved that paper. Now, it, I mean, Arches is amazing, but yeah. Um, let's see, where are we at? 9.55, we are almost done. So I need to set up the live stream. I've got to come up with a design to do Christmas glitch. That'll be fun. Um, medium for that. I'm not sure what medium I'm going to do because that's kind of... Like a red-eyed tree frog can be a little bit complicated, like time-wise. And if I'm doing that, because I said, oh, I should do it with a candy cane. It needs to be something I can do quick. I'm almost thinking a watercolor and colored. Wow, well, no, I always think I can do watercolor and colored pencil fast, and it never is. Um, yeah, I know that. It probably needs to be acrylic. It either is probably going to need to be pan pastels and colored pencil or acrylic to, be, to get it done fast enough. Probably acrylics. I know I've done a lot of acry acrylics in a row, but yeah, that's... Um, probably the route we're going to have to go on. I think it'll have to be acrylic to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a design. Maybe I can do a design where I can do it in colored pencil, but like a quick loose sketch type thing. I may be able to do that because that could be fun. Or pan pastels. Yeah, pan pastels in colored pencil. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud and I'm really, if I mean, anyone wants pan pastels. Okay. I'm going to see if I can come up with a design that we can get it done in pan pastels. It'll be kind of a looser, soft. It won't be super crisp detail because, you know, we've got a time issue there, but it still will be really cute. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Thank you for putting up with my brain not working. Like seriously, after the live stream crashed, my brain's like, checked out. I'm done. Like the stress of trying to fit. So yeah, I apologize that my, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll be back to normal, hopefully next week with the glitch painting. So, um, let's see. And I think that's it. Thank you to the moderate, our mo the moderators. That sounds personal. Our moderators, we mod moderate, God, I should just turn this off now. Moderators. Uh, we've got Nick, and um, he did a digital painting recently. We've got Joseph who does live, Joseph and Clark Fine Art. They both do weekly live streams. So definitely check them out. Links are in the video description. Thank you guys so much for joining. I will see you next week. And hopefully my brain will be working properly at that point. Oh, I don't even know how to close this out because my thing is not working. Um, hmm. Let's do this. Maybe that button and then, oh God, I don't know. Thank you.